Hey, 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 and welcome to the Women Consulting Corporate Podcast. I'm your host, Liz J. Simpson, accompanied by our Director of Operations here at Stimulus, Kelly Wasson. And in today's episode, I want to get real and talk about building a team and embracing and navigating the healthy tension that's involved with having a strong leadership team. I think too often as small businesses, there's this conversation about building a team and finding partners and strong leaders, but I don't think we talk enough about what that really looks like uh, behind the scenes. So we have a lot of people in our community that'll tell us like, Liz, I need a Kelly. Like, <laughs> Liz, let me get Kelly. I am very clear. If I ever really piss this woman off one day, the, the sky is the limit for her business opportunities. I like, I think every single one of our clients is trying to snatch Kelly up. But, oh my um, goodness. but that being said, when we talk about it, um, they're often surprised when they hear about the truth of our journey and our relationship. Um, you're like my spouse in my head. I have like two spouses. I have a husband and a work wife. Um, and both relationships are very difficult to navigate. <laughs> so I just wanted to have a real conversation about that. I can start off by talking about a little bit of our origination story. And then I'd be curious of your point of view mm-hmm. to talk about it. Perfect. Okay. All right. So Kelly really runs our business, right? And so I'm really grateful because I was very clear that in leading a business that I needed an ops partner. Many of you might have read the book Traction, right? That talks about um, the visionary and the integrator. And I was very clear that I was a visionary, like high levels, excited, and I needed someone to kind of keep my feet on the ground and make sure that the business was sustainable. And so I was looking for someone to be my integrator, right? The operation side of the business. And I can truly wholeheartedly say that from the moment that you came into the business, we have exponentially grown, right? And I I give so much credit where credit is due. My brand, my face is visible, but it's because of Kelly's leadership that we've been able to really sustain the growth that we've had. And really, you have been, girl, my spiritual partner in so many ways. I think Mm -hmm. because of the intimacy of our business and the things that we go through, I don't think really anyone else really knows what it's taken Mm -hmm. to grow and sustain this business. And so I'm so thankful for you in leading the business. And so what, December of 2020, 2019, 2021, 2020, 2020, December, 2020, I put out that I was hiring Um, at the time. It was the ops manager and Kelly's resume came in and I was shocked. (laughs) (laughs) The one I was shocked because I she was working with another company that mm-hmm. I was aware of. And I had imposter syndrome because I was nowhere near where that business was at the time. And so I was like, oh, okay, I know the company she working with. All right, this is scary. And um, it was also terrifying because salary, it also meant a different level of investment, which me as a small business owner, I had one idea of what I would be investing in for an ops manager but I knew for the level of talent and skill set and experience that she had, that that would be a different level of investment. So I had to make a really hard decision of like, girl, you going to stick with this budget and miss out? Are you going to move around some money to make this work? <laughs> um, and I joke about that, but many of my clients know, like I had anxiety attacks for like two weeks um, because it was, it was an investment that I, it was the largest investment I made in my business at that time. And I felt so much pressure and I was so afraid of failure. You know, I was like, I didn't want to fail. I didn't want you to fail. I knew you had family responsibilities. Um, And I'm so thankful for those couple weeks of anxiety attacks because you have been like one of the greatest gifts to me in the business. Um, But from your perspective, do you kind of want to share your view on how we actually got connected in our story? Yes. So I was working for this multi seven figure team. I was doing what I loved, but there was just, you know, it's like that 80-20. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's something missing. It's not perfect. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. I really wanted to be seen in a different way. I wanted to be seen for my blackness. And at the time, it was a gap that was missing that I was just, I, I was realigning my with my values and really understanding that that's what I wanted to be a part of at work. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw your job posting, I was really excited. And I'm like, who is this 
firecracker woman. Like <laughs> she speaks so confidently and you know, it was sharp and fast and just and authentically and unapologetically black. And that's what I was looking for and what I needed. And so it was like, oh, I could do this role what I thought with my eyes closed <laughs> and, you know, have my blackness celebrated, I'm going for it. So I put in, you know, my hat in the ring and you were open to the conversation. And so I was so grateful for the conversation and also just like freaking out because I, I knew that you would be like, why is she, you know, like, <laughs> where is she coming from? I'm about to burn a bridge. <laughs> I am burning a bridge, y'all. <laughs> Yes. And so we had the original conversation and that's when we got on the phone. I'm prepared for a formal interview where I am like going to button up <laughs> and, you know, I've got all my, I think I had on a blazer, my makeup, you know, I'm like, and Liz is in a hoodie, like, <laughs> okay, take the mask off. <laughs> what is this? And you really wanted to have that initial, like, let's talk about the elephant in the room right away. Mm -hmm. And so I really, really appreciated that. <laughs> I was excited. I was, I did have the element of like, okay, this is like one of the greatest gifts that could have come. But then I was also like, am I gonna burn a bridge, mm -hmm. right? Like what's the collateral damage of bringing someone on my team from another company um, mm -hmm. that I know about? And so I did reach out at least, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna be candid, it was like, if I'm a bird of bridge for Kelly, I'm a bird of bridge. <laughs> <laughs> like, we gonna, we gonna move on. <laughs> Find another bridge. <laughs> all love to this person who might listen. Yes. But <laughs> no, all, all love. love. But yeah, you might have lost one. But, uh, <laughs> uh, anywho, moving on. So that was, so I was excited. I remember that was the holidays. Like, yep. I was praising baby Jesus. Same. I was like, hallelujah. <laughs> this is the best thing ever. We're about to take over for the 99. Mm -hmm. And then we met in person. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? <laughs> you can you can share first. <laughs> so we're excited. We're aligned. Um, we did uh, Colby assessments and disc assessments before we came. Kelly mm -hmm. and I are both strong D personality types. Mm -hmm. We are both women who know what we want. We articulate it. We show up very strong. Um, and so we had two, three days together. Three days. Three days. Yeah. <sighs> Jesus. All right. So we had these three days that was supposed to be strategic planning meeting, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the first, I think it was just the last day, right? Or second day. Well, we had worked together. I need to go back because we had worked together for a few weeks. Oh, yeah, yes. Virtually. virtually. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe three weeks virtually just fine. Like talking around the clock on Voxer. We wore Voxer out those first three weeks. And it yeah. was perfect. So then you suggested like, okay, I've got to get you down to San Antonio. We mm -hmm. have to, you know, map out what, where, the, where we're going strategically for the business this year. And that's when I came. Yeah. Um, I'm curious of your viewpoint of what happened. We hit a landlock. Like we just hit a point where I needed one thing. She needed something different. The conversation got hot and it just went bad. Like, um, I don't think that we said anything like disrespectful mm -hmm. to each other. It's just if you've known Kelly or I, when we're dissatisfied, you're going to feel that shit. Like we were just like, girl. <laughs> like <laughs> it was a strong disagreement that we couldn't see out of. I left. Mm -hmm. I literally called my husband crying. Like I've just lost my ops oh. manager. Like it's done. Like, yeah. you know, is she going to get safely to the airport? Like we just had a strong disagreement and a different, um, Varying perspectives on something. Yeah. yeah. I think it was because we plan different. Mm -hmm. We approach strategic planning different. And we never talked about the approach that we were going to <laughs> have to strategic planning and like what that looked like. I am ops. So I'm logistics. I need to talk about every single detail. And I want to make sure that all I's are dotted and all T's are crossed. And you are big vision, yeah. big picture. Which I knew. So I I was a little shocked that we hit. I don't know what, I think it was just a perfect storm. Like mm -hmm. I was, so for those listening, sometimes, so the way I process is like prep me. Mm -hmm. And then I think privately, I don't do well brainstorming a lot with others, which is very, so it's like, I think three days together, we didn't have a break from each other. Mm -hmm. And 
And and I felt this isn't what you were doing, but I was like, she needs answers to questions I don't have the freaking answer to, and I have to real time process, and I got to give a lot of detail, and I'm annoyed. Like, yeah, I'm over it. I'm like, yeah. you asked me shit out. I don't like not having the answer to stuff. Right. But I also think it was just I don't know what it was. It was just the perfect storm. Mm-hmm. So we had a disagreement. I thought I lost you forever. Um, and then we made up. Like it probably was less than an hour. Yeah, yeah no, it was probably it was... an hour. And then I call. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna call her. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to call her back and we just need to have this discussion, which my personality type doesn't typically do that. I will withdraw and be done. She cut you off in but, a second. <laughs> but something was like, okay, no, I need to have this difficult conversation. I value this relationship. I could see the potential. And so mm-hmm. I wanted to work through it. And so we did. We did. We did. And that's a big taste of our first year, Mm -hmm. candidly. You know, I will say this, speaking of healthy attention, we both read the book Radical Radical Candor, Mm -hmm. which has kind of become our thing, is like, you know, if you want a yes person, you'll do fine. But if you actually want a strong right-hand leader, that means those are two strong personalities, which means you are not going to see eye to eye. And to me, I think that has been the secret sauce for like people trying to dissect why our business is taking off. Mm -hmm. Like I have, I love you, girl. I I love you. And I respect you. Now, I don't agree with all the shit you say. Right. Right. (laughs) Same, vice versa. (laughs) Right. Right? (laughs) It goes both ways. But we have two completely different personality types that are in it to win it. And I think it's that conflict and that tension that those diverse perspectives that give us the innovation and give us like the gold in our business. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've, I've had to learn like our first year, we had a lot of like challenging conversations. Um, But I think for me, it was just, I had to learn you. Mm -hmm. And I think it's almost like the same level of investment in like marriage therapy that I have. Like, this is my husband's communication style and in conflict, this is how he shows up. And when he's going in a hole, this is what he's thinking. Like, I feel like, I literally feel like I've had to put as much into our relationship as I would like a spousal relationship. Like, Mm -hmm. how does Kelly process? I can sometimes read your energy, sometimes I can't. Right. But it's an investment. Do you see it that way or how do you see it? Yes. I also see it as like, the reason why we're both so successful is because we were radically individual. We exercise radical individualism. (laughs) So we know what we want. We're very headstrong. We know, you know, we set a goal, we go for it, we leap. But then when it comes to collaborating with these Mm -hmm. two types of like radically individualistic (laughs) people, (laughs) I think that's where we have to get like really creative. And I think I was telling our finance team, we were just talking about this last week, is that um, we had to dig into intention. And so at the end of the day, we could disagree. I don't see her side. She doesn't see my side. <laughs> but I know at the end of the day, the intention is we both have the same goal. We want to yeah. grow this business. We want to impact these women and take this business to the moon. And yeah. so I think as long as we have that same goal and that same mission and vision, we'll get there. I agree. In the beginning, I think the first year, what, what it wasn't that we wouldn't see eye to eye. It was always the narrative I made up about it. Mm-hmm. So in my head, it would be like, she's disagreeing. But I don't think, it's not like I consciously thought she's disagreeing because she doesn't want us to succeed. It's like, she's disagreeing. But instead of the seeing as like, she disagrees because she thinks this is the path to success. It was like, She's disagreeing, so I'm going to be sabotaged. Or she's disagreeing because of this. Or she's going to leave me. And and so it took me realizing, like, this is how she shows up when she cares. Mm. She's invested. If she voices her opinion, she's voicing it because she thinks this is the path to success. And I think the moment, to your point, that I embraced that intention... Like, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm like the second year, I feel like we like cooking with gas. Oh, yeah. Like, we're like invincible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I know that a lot of the clients will say, I want a Kelly. And I just <laughs> want them to know like what that comes with when you hire and are looking to bring on a strong leader that comes with someone that might completely have a different map of the world, see the path to success differently and just bringing those strong minds and strong opinions to the table 
and deciding a way forward. And I, and a lot of it at the end of the day is like, I could have a strong opinion all day at the end of the day, (laughs) you are the CEO and the leader of this business. And I understand that. And so I have to check myself sometimes like Kelly, you are here in a support role. Like, yes, you're a leader. She values your opinion, but at the end of the day, <laughs> sometimes you have to submit and like, okay, let's see something that I don't see. Like your vision, you're at literally 30,000 feet and I'm at 10,000 feet. And so you might see something that I don't see and it's always worked out. That's kind, but um, <laughs> it definitely goes both ways because there are things I don't see that I trust your vision on that I submit on. Mm-hmm. I'm side eyeing her because she knows that's the territory of the language that pisses me off the most, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> it's your shit. Like, <laughs> no, it's not. It's ours. <laughs> yeah. But no, I do hear that. And do you mind sharing? Because that you talked about from your side, like in the beginning, do you want to see? I'm trying not to put words in your mouth, but like um, realizing that someone being strong or having an opinion doesn't mean that your job is in jeopardy. Mm. Yes. So I think, uh, you know, I'm a, a mom and an individual, black woman, wife, da, da, da. I'm bringing my whole self to this business, but the trauma that I'm working through on my own therapy, my individual therapy <laughs> is that, you know, if there's a disagreement, I'm not going to fit a square peg into a round hole. And so, oh, this doesn't fit. I need to leave. This isn't working. Mm-hmm. Da da da. And what I've learned through our relationship is that tension and conflict can be healthy. And we can, you know, there's more on the other side of it. Like, I don't have, it doesn't mean like, oh, this isn't a fit. This doesn't work. Mm-hmm. We need to go our separate ways. But how can we both bring our ideas to the table and then move forward together? Yeah. I, as an entrepreneur, You know, when I look at the people on the team and I always say we're Bulls 96, like the dream team, 6P. I'm from Chicago originally. One of my greatest fears as an entrepreneur is that to be on a boat that's sinking and to be surrounded by people who see it sinking and nobody tells me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's like, it's her shit. Let her drown then. Right. And like, Mm -hmm. I've always wanted people to challenge me, like, don't let me make decisions to sink this boat. Like you hear that all the time with businesses, right? Like you hear the water cooler, like, well, I knew because so-and-so came in here doing X, Y, Z. Like, well, why didn't you say that? Mm -hmm. Right. And so one of the things that's been really important to me with Kelly is like, you're here to challenge me. Mm -hmm. If I wanted an echo chamber, I wouldn't have brought you in. You're here because I want to hear a different perspective or opinion and I value yours. And you know, sometimes you tell me something and I don't be ready. And then a few months later, I'll be like, remember what you had said that I should <laughs> Actually, I'm ready now, girl. I'm ready to listen. But I, but I realized that to your point, as the CEO, of course, it's like, I'm like, oh, it's mine, right? Of course I can challenge people. And so also making sure that people know that for me as a leader, it's safe to challenge me. And, and we've seen on our team, actually the people who aren't safe are the people who don't challenge me. Like I, it's like, oh, you're repeating me? Okay, well, I don't need to hear someone repeat what I think, mm. right? You know what I mean? Like I, need, I don't need a repetition of my own thoughts. I need someone who's adding contributions to this company and who's gonna uh, challenge me. But I think with our relationship and you, like you have saved me from myself. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I've really needed that. Yeah, I think that, like as a leadership team, you and I, we create this environment for the rest of the team, like a, a safe space for them to come and say like, hey, we ask for everyone's opinion. Like we are articulate about saying <laughs> out loud, not just this, you know, hidden expectation that, oh, you better bring your ideas to the table. You better have the loudest voice. No, we give everyone an opportunity to bring their ideas to the table and we create a safe space so that they can challenge what is Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we have this relationship between the two of us right that has taken a lot of time effort and consistently right like we still Mm -hmm. have our moments right but let's talk about building a team like for us what do you perceive have been like our greatest wins as building a team and what do you think are some of our greatest challenges I think our greatest wins is when we had the mindset shift that okay like we can do a lot together. Like we, like me and Liz could probably 
burn ourselves out running this business. No one would know, but at the end, we would be so pooped and tired. But we, our win is to say like, hey, it is possible that we can bring on a Cheryl. We can bring on, a, you know, another coach. We can bring on other op support and really give ourselves the oxygen to lead the business and develop the team. So now it's about the team showing up and the team delivering, and then we get to pour into them. And I think that that's been our biggest win. And then the fact that we are just really good at choosing and articulating our values to team members when we're still in that courtship phase and giving them an opportunity to say yay or nay. And then we, we always choose the right individuals. I feel like we have the right individuals on the team right this moment. We do. We've, it's been challenging, mm -hmm. right? Um, one of the things that we recently talked about is just making sure that we have the starting lineup, mm -hmm. right? I think sometimes um, we have this conversation with our community, right? They're trying to build a team and they're looking for, you know, fresh young talent to invest in. And I think for us and each business is unique. Our business is so fast growing and we're so impact driven. Mm -hmm. And candidly, you know, I have to give so much love and kudos to our team because Cheryl, Heather, Deanna, like when they come on the team, these are women who come ready to add value from day one, right? And because our business is so fast growing, we have onboarding and things of that nature, but I don't have a lot of time and attention to give, right? I'm not, I can't pour into someone to teach them the ABCs of what it is they do. They have to come in and create impact from day one. And so I think one of the lessons I've had from the past couple of years is building your starting lineup first, people who have the experience, who can add value, share insights from day one, and letting them be the starting lineup. And then we can build. And once the business is stable, we can be more um, invested in the next generation of people and pouring mm -hmm. into them. But if I'm being fair, our business is moving too fast and it's it's actually toxic for someone mm -hmm. who's like looking to be cultivated. It's mm -hmm. like you will be a baby who's like crying for milk and no one's going to have time to give you any because yeah. everyone's out building things. And we just have to be honest about that. Yeah. And I love that conversation with the clients because then I was able to say, I think we are in a place of privilege to be able to hire leaders only right now <laughs> and to build that starting lineup only and not have, you know, super green talent or interns on the team that we have to cultivate and mm -hmm. develop. But, you know, sometimes that's not the reality for everyone. And mm -hmm. so you need to know which type of team member you're um, onboarding and what type of development they might need. Yeah, I agree. I definitely could see that. Mm -hmm. And if you struggle with that, that's why you need to be in our program. So you can learn ROI Absolutely. based pricing and bake the costs of star talent in your contracts, right? Because if you're struggling to invest top talent, that means your margins, mm -hmm. right, are slim. And so we see that a lot. But there are ways to build with VAs and things of that nature. So I definitely do appreciate that. I love that this year we were able to grow in a way that like last year we would lose team members or have to let people go and we, it would just be like the most devastating hit. We would both be yeah. in the bed, <laughs> sick, oh, crying, snug. Go, go. <laughs> and now we're just able to look at it in a more healthy way and transition is not always a bad thing. So I'd yeah. love to have you kind of talk about that oh, transition. Oh, really? You love to have me <laughs> talk about letting folks go? <laughs> and like how yeah. we grew together as a leadership team yeah. and what firing looks like now. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I am still processing like not how I feel, but how I articulate it. Cause it's, I hope people in the seat can understand. Like I used to be so paralyzed by the idea of firing that we would know early that someone wasn't a good fit for the team. And we, I, I'm gonna just keep that. Eye. And I would keep them on for too long because of people pleasing, right? Not because they were the best fit for the business or necessarily because of the impact they were providing to the company, but because of things other than that, right? And so it was like by the time we would make a decision, it was excruciating. Like it's almost waiting to the point of resentment, mm -hmm. which is actually unhealthy. It's like, instead of me, um, 
taking action on what I know is best for the business and telling you early, I'm waiting until this becomes resentment and sours the relationship in some degree, right? And so what's happened is after some really difficult conversations of letting some people go from our team, I realized that I don't know if it's thicker skin, it's like separating the shame from it and and being more proactive about the conversations. And for anyone listening, right, there has to be performance involved, right? So this is, you know, if there's before anyone's ever let go, like there's performance improvement plans, there's meetings, there's documentation, right? It's just that we were prolonging it Mm -hmm. for so long. And I think now I feel more assertive about protecting the business. And that's Mm -hmm. how I have to look at it. Like we're still a small business, this is not a charity, right? I don't have enough cash flow to have three people I'm paying full-time salaries just because I'm afraid to hurt their feelings, but we're not getting any return on the investment. And that's kind of the behavior I used to have. And so now it's like, I am protective of the women on this team who are performing. I'm protective of our clients in order to make sure this business can sustain itself and survive as a small business. I have to make great decisions to make sure the business can thrive. And it's Mm -hmm. it's a poor CEO decision to be spending multiple six figures on salaries when you're not getting performance out of them. Mm -hmm. And and that's not an easy, sexy conversation to have, but it's a real one. And so that's the place that I'm at now of like realizing that. And it's kind of interesting, like the play on the play that I had to do in my mind was like, for me, people pleaser, and I'm talking to extreme people pleasers right now, is like, I would look at my kids and be like, if your business fails and you're not able to provide for these babies because you couldn't have a difficult conversation about someone's performance, like, what are we doing? Wow. You know? Yeah. No. And and then we'll, like, sometimes it's just not a, it's a misalignment with this business and that person at this time. Yeah. And and so then we'll see that we let someone go, but then they go off and they soar yeah. A, with a different company <laughs> and they come back and the relationship is still intact because we let it go yeah. in a reasonable time. And then they come back and they tell us all the amazing things they're doing yes. <laughs> with the other company. Yes. yes. It's exciting. It's, it's, I just want to normalize it. It's not easy, mm-hmm. right? It's not easy building a company and a team and the talent portion, especially for a fast growth company. I think our greatest challenge has been building the team as fast as the business could grow. Like we have said no to so like people praise our growth, but they don't realize is how much potential, like we said no to a lot Mm -hmm. because we don't have the team yet. Um, And we're growing organically, right? We don't have an investor dropping 10 million so we could hire 20 people at once. You know, we are growing organically and there's a lot to be said for that. So I just wanted to have this conversation really about like the behind the scenes of healthy tension. I I think too often we glamorize relationships and we don't talk about that. You're making an investment in another person. Like my, my relationship with you matters a lot. And the, the last thing I'll say too, because I've been a part of toxic cultures like this, like I'm grateful for Kelly and I give you so much credit for the growth of our business, but I truly love this woman. So You know, it's like there's a quote I shared recently that says, like, if you admire a flower, admire it by looking at it, because if you pluck the flower, you're killing it. Right. And so, like, for me, it's like I love and adore you truly. And as long as this is a healthy relationship and whatever we're doing fulfills you, I'm so excited for it. But the moment you have another vision or your call for something else, I will celebrate you and I love you from afar because I'm most concerned about your fulfillment. And I think, too, as leaders, we have to find the duality of like, on one hand, I'm like, what would I do without Kelly? But on the other hand, I'll figure it out if God calls Kelly to something else because Mm -hmm. I want you to thrive. And I don't ever want I want you to be proud of your contribution. I don't ever want you to feel caged by it. Does that make sense? Yes. No, I appreciate that so much. Thank you, Liz. Of course. All right. If you all want more behind the scenes conversations of corporate conversations, building business conversations, make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube and watch us on all your favorite streaming platforms. I'm Liz J. Simpson signing off. See you on the next episode. Bye.